Welcome to Bar Chart series of webinars designed to educate you about a variety of market concepts, inform you of the features and tools Bar Chart provides related to these concepts, and finally to offer you some traders insight to help you make a more informed investment decision. Today's subject, short-term chart patterns. Now understanding a variety of short-term patterns, how they decipher battles between buyers and sellers, their ability to forecast reversals of longer term positions and trends, and that these patterns are often found where prices have reached in an extreme, or they help us identify pullbacks and throwback opportunities of entries into greater trends. And these are all just another tool in our tool, Trader's Toolbox, to evaluating a cluster of price evidence. So hello everyone, my name is John Rowland and please stick around today with as we explore our short-term uh, patterns and we look to unlock those clues that short-term patterns um, can provide. So please welcome with me today is my partner and our moderator, Bar Charts Project Director, Gene Baker. Hello, Gene. Happy Wednesday, John. How are you doing? Hump day. Yeah, hump day. Hump day. <laughs> <laughs> Anything planned for your hump day? Oh, just getting through the webinar, getting through the day, and uh... getting over the hump. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> same, same here. It just seems like another week flies by, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I can't believe like we're already like halfway through the summer too, you know. Yeah, it flies. Time's a flying. Make sure we enjoy the the weather because you know it'll happen. I'll say in a week or two we'll be complaining that it's snowing outside, right? Oh no, don't say that. Not yet. <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. We guys still have time for that. <laughs> All right, so you ready to get started, Gene? Absolutely. Let's get okay. going. Let's get this party started. All right, so just a reminder that today's session is always for educational purposes only, and decisions to buy, sell, or hold, or trade securities, commodities, or any other investment involves risk and is best made on the advice of a qualified financial professional, and that under no circumstances shall we be liable for any, any losses or damages you or anyone incurs as a result of trading or investment activity that you or anyone engages in based on information that you receive through barchart.com and our services. Okay, so short-term patterns. So what are they and what is it all about? Well, in essence, it, we are we gonna focus on the information that is being provided by maybe just a single bar, uh, the range from high to low. And now normally what we'll see is the greater the range, the more price volatility, and the greater the price volatility, the higher the probability of continued price movement. But we're also we're going to look at where the opening and closing prices fall inside of that range. And these can offer clues to the battles behind the bar. In other words, the battles between our buyers and sellers. Now, short-term patterns could be a combination of one bar's range and its opening and closing in a relationship to the following bar. And this, again, will help us identify who's winning these battles. Whoops. Now, short-term. It does not uh, equate to a time, right? Uh, short term is not a measurement of time, but it's a number of or only a few uh, bars. Matter of fact, through our process today, I'm going to show you that you can find short term patterns in all time frames. And when we do have uh, a short-term pattern that's in a higher time frame, they tend to have a greater predictability. But they're also excellent in discovering opportunities in smaller time frames. Often there are reversal patterns, a change in price direction, 
But these reversal patterns, when are, they are discovered, let's say, in context of a trend analysis, are also excellent odds enhancers. But there is a drawback to short-term patterns, and especially in lower timeframes. And that is that we're not gonna take them on their own because they have numerous false signals. But what we want to do is we want to use them in a combination with additional data. For instance, trend, volume, time of day, momentum indicators, trend lines, moving averages, dot, 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 et cetera, whatever. A, a, you know, a, a cluster of evidence. And this is where short-term patterns uh, prove their worth. So what can one bar tell me? So the relationship of the range to high and low and the distance or the sequence of our opening to our close can tell us a very unique and distinctive story as to what buyers and sellers are doing. Now, for example, a wide range bar, a bar that has a large price movement from high to low, uh, is an indication of greater volatility. And this could be a sign that we're about to see the beginning of a new trend or an end of an, an existing trend. Now, if price of the closing price, excuse me, um, where they fall in the range also um, can tell us a story. For instance, if we see both the high, the opening and the close in the high of the range, then that could be telling us that bulls are in control or buyers in controls. If we look at, let's say, a wide range in price and the closing price finishes at, let's say, the near or the low, then that is kind of telling us that bears or sellers are in control and that price should continue to go lower. Now, if price fails to follow through from what the information that we're seeing inside maybe a single bar, then this is even a greater story that the opposite force, bulls to bears or bears to bulls, has brought in reinforcements and that price volatility should be amplified and that we will see a opposite direction in price. Now, I will give you an example of that, something that just recently happened in, in Apple. So I'll remind myself to show you that. All right, so the first pattern that we're gonna look at is called an inside bar. Now, an inside bar is whose range, it's high to low, is inside, here's the inside bar right here, it's inside the previous bar's range. Now, they typically represent a pause in price before a continuation in price. And as price moves on, when price moves above the inside bar, that is usually an indication that the direction is going to continue to go up. If price moves below the inside bar, that is usually an indication that price is going to continue in the down uh, direction. So let's go to set this up for you guys. So here is uh, General Mills. Now, before we get started, I just want to show you a little trick that Gene taught me, which I'm very fond of now. If I want to kind of magnify an area, you know, I'm looking at these particular bars, and I want to just isolate them. One of the cool tricks I can do is I can hold down my control bar and just drag across, and then a little magnifying that area. If I want to exit from that magnification, then all I have to do is just double click and, and it'll return to uh, default size. So let's magnify this again. And so here we see 
Here's a large range bar, and here we see our bar has its high and low is inside of the previous uh, bar. It's, this is an inside bar. But what is one bar telling us? What is this one inside bar telling us? Well, our high and our open and our close are all in the relatively the same area. In other words, if we thought about this bar, we would say that bulls are in control. So even though this is an inside bar of pause or equilibrium, so sometimes you might hear, uh, what we're seeing is that the bulls are still in control. And in context of this trend, once price broke out above our inside bar, we see a continuation of our price action, a continuation of our trend. And this is why it's important when we do small uh, short-term uh, patterns is that we always want to make sure that we can identify the trend uh, before we start looking at what the information or the short-term pattern could be predicting for us. So here is an, an example of a short-term pattern reversal. But what we're seeing here is a change in price. And again, let me blow this up a little bit for you. There we go. And again, you know, in context, we were we saw that price was trending higher. But again, here's our inside bar that's inside of the previous range bar. And what is the story that this one bar is telling us? Well, in this case, we see that our opening price and our closing price is in the low end of the range. Again, signifying to us that bears are in control in this uh, particular bar, even though we've been in an uptrend. So that could be an indication to us that price action is going to fall. Again, once price breaks below the inside bar, that would be that confirmation of that price action. Now, in this particular uh, instance, I might not be looking for a shorting opportunity, but what I might be doing is thinking about if I was in this trend, where would I be thinking about to lock in profits or take off maybe some of my position or implement some protective, um, maybe some options, protective options positions. But again, Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I've got a couple questions on this, so I just want to make sure that uh, we can point this out now instead of waiting. John is using a six-month daily chart, so each bar represents one day. There we go. Yep. Uh, if so, John, if you are using an intraday chart, let's say a 15-minute chart, each bar is going to represent 15 minutes of price action. Okay. Yep. So it's a great uh, segue here, um, Gene, is what I was gonna about to say is that, <laughs> you know, is not only am I thinking about this as an exit, but short-term patterns of price reversals could be a potential entry for maybe a shorter term trader in terms, let's say of a day trader or a swing trader. And a swing trader could have taken that short position based on that inside bar price below but a short-term trader always wants to look for, you know, where they're going to set their target based on opposing supply or demand or opposing uh, highs and lows. And in this case, we would be taking a contra trend trade and a swing trade of an exit that we don't see the inside bar here at the 60-minute time frame. But I'll go back to the daily in a second. But on the 60-minute time frame, well, market came back to an area of support inside of that higher time frame 
uh, trend. So what the gene is telling us here is we were jumping between two different time frames, and each bar represent that individual time frame. What I'm showing you here is what a short-term pattern can do for you is not only uh, use for exits in this case, if this was a uptrend that you were in, but for short-term traders, uh, this could have been a nice little, you know, two-day swing trade where price returned uh, until it found support. This little red line represents that little red box that I drew. drew. All right, so that's a good example of both of those. All right, so the next one is our outside bar. And this one is where um, our high and low is outside of the previous bar's range. In this case, here's our outside bar, and it is outside of the previous bar's range. Now, um, outside bars are more significant if we can find them at the end of extended trends or if the outside bars close, which is I'm representing here, is outside or above or below the range of the previous bar, which is what I'm kind of representing here. So this short-term pattern is more in line with our reversal type patterns. And ideally what we want to do is we want to find an outside bar at an end of a correction of a higher time frame dominant trend. But they're also very helpful to help us in timing exits as well of uh, extended trends. So let's go back to our Humera. And again, you can see we have a nice long extended trend here. And there is our outside bar. And again, what I'm saying is what makes an outside bar more significant is if you know our openings and our closes are both outside of the previous bar's range. In particular, when we're seeing a reversal pattern, I'm gonna concentrate a lot more on the closing price being outside, not necessarily uh, the opening price, but this is an, a classic textbook example of an outside bar. Now, what is interesting about this particular bar is that notice how powerful this area became because it withstood two retests right there before eventually succumbing. But these retests, if I make them a little bit wider, are inside bars that confirmed a reversal in price. All right, so after Humera, let's see, I wanna to go to our next example. So again, you know, understanding trend in terms of these reversal patterns and again, our outside bar, we kind of want to want to find opportunities where we are in a correction of our trend. And again, here is an outside bar, which confirmed a change in price direction. But again, in context of our higher time frame trend here, here's that correction. And this is really what we wanna do. Here's a better entry for us to reestablish a short position with this downside trend. And what we said was short-term patterns are better when they are uh, combined with other technical analysis. In this case, we see a reversal pattern that came inside an area of resistance or a potential supply zone. So here is an example of finding a reversal out of a correction of a more dominant downtrend. And notice that the reversal is in line 
with our area of resistance. So the next one is one of my favorite um, patterns. Uh, this is called the two bar reversal. Sometimes you'll hear them referred to as pinchers or tweezers or maybe even twins. And this is one of the ones that I kind of hunt for. Um, and I look for these in all time frames, but I really kind of watch for these in my trend time frames. And again, whatever my trend time frame is, depending on the style of trading that I'm doing. Um, but day traders, take note of this one. Uh, this one should become one of your bread and butter patterns that you should be looking for. So what does a two bar reversal uh, pattern look like? Well, uh, this pattern uh, usually occurs at the ends of trends, usually uh, kind of explosive price actions as well. Now the first bar moves in the direction of the current trend or the current price action. And typically the close is in the upper end of the bar. Now this would be an upside set of tweezers or pinchers. And if it was the opposite, a downside, we would see the close at the lower end of the range. And then the second bar will move in the opposite direction of the prevailing trend. And in this case, close in the lower uh, part of the range. So this is first is the pattern we're going to look for. But once we get the pattern, we still need to look for uh, the confirmation. And the confirmation is when price moves through our tweezers or, or our pinchers. In other words, when price breaks the leg or the leg in of the bar that was with the trend or the price action. So a failure here, price falls here, that would be our sell signal and our confirmation. Now, if you have high volume and also the bodies are of approximate length, that adds confidence to the pattern. Now, when you're looking at this approximate length and bodies, not do we need to see both of them have the exact same height, or in this case, high. Many times you can see tweezers or pinchers where the leg in bar so, oh excuse me closing price is the same as the leg out or the down bars opening price and that would give you that tweezer pattern all right again remember pattern first confirmation uh, a second so And again, you know, if I find these in higher time frames, they do have a lot more uh, predictability and confidence. And for instance, in this one, we're looking at three years worth of data and I'm looking at a weekly chart. And there is, you know, that pincher formation, right? Not only do these two bars have the same height, but there's that example where you see the close of this bar is the opening of uh, this bar. When price breaks below this bar here, that is your confirmation that uh, you know price should continue lower. So that's around 104. If I was, you know, long this stock, I had caught this uptrend, you know, around 104, I would be getting concerned about uh, exiting this trade or and finding some um, exit solutions. Now, what's kind of really cool about short-term patterns, there is a fractal nature. In other words, they tend to repeat at all time frames. So if I look at this same area, I'm going to change my time frame here from weekly to daily. And let me go to the left and find that pattern. There it is there. Notice that we see the same pattern. Here's our both have the same high. There's that open and close relationship. But notice here that at the daily level, 
our confirmation when price broke below our tweezers would have been around, looks like around 106.35. So this is one of the benefits of short-term patterns, is, especially when we go to lower time frames, is they can give us a warning or tell us that these reversals are coming a lot quicker um, in time than when I would be looking, let's say, if I was trading this on a weekly basis. So how would I use this information? Well, first of all, if I saw this and I broke below this 106.35 at the daily level, that would have been an indication to me that there is a price reversal coming. Where would I get that confidence or that confirmation? Well, that puts me on alert. So once it broke that 104, um, if I was at a weekly level in terms of my trading style, that would have been the exit point for me. If I'm trading this at the daily level, well, notice how it gave me an indication or a signal to exit this trade, you know, at a lot uh, higher price. Again, capturing a greater amount of profit uh, in terms of the length of this extended trend. Let's go to Apple. Now here we have our two bar reversal. And again, you know, it doesn't have to be, they don't have to always match up. We're just looking for, you know, this quick reversal in price. Again, we still need to find that confirmation, that next bar that uh, continues in that direction. But I also said to you that these reversal patterns work a lot better when we use them in conjunction with other technical analysis in terms of this reversal pattern is telling us that you know maybe we're seeing a bottom, maybe we're seeing a reversal in trend, this price trend. And if I zoom out a little bit, it makes a lot more sense why we saw this reversal here is because this came into an area of support that we found at maybe a higher time frame and that these reversal patterns these short-term reversal patterns usually are telling us that there's an end of a price action in this case a downward price action or could alert us to the beginning of a new trend so in this case it is an alerting us to the beginning of a new trend now, why I'm at Apple here is, uh, let me go back to this outside bar here. And remember I said in the opening that if you are looking at one of these bars and it's giving you an indication, you know, the signal that you wouldn't typically uh, would get from them and it doesn't follow through or reverses, uh, that's usually a very strong indication that something, you know, that price is going to continue in that reversal action and also that volatility is going to come back into that uh, particular equity. So in this case, look, here we had an outside bar in Apple and an outside bar that came in an area of resistance, which is represented by these two blue lines, the same area of resistance uh, that we're going to look at again um, in a second. But, you know, you know, I kind of took this trade yesterday and you know, I jumped the gun and this is why it's really important to have discipline and you have a set of rules. You know, yeah, we we took out this, you know, this bar here, but I didn't get my what? Didn't get my confirmation, right? The next bar, that confirmation. Matter of fact, what did price do? It reversed back up. Now, if we look at this in terms of reversal patterns, uh, there's our two bar reversal. Here's the uh, Closing price here is is the low of this bar. This would be, you know, kind of like a pincher or a tweezer. And now what is this is telling me is that there's a greater volatility in Apple, and that if I was an Apple trader and I was long, you know, probably going to see you know Apple get up into you know maybe one 157, 158. As far as I'm concerned, you know, I bought some puts, you know. 
um, I exit those puts uh, today. So, uh, you know, lesson to be learned and why we need to have discipline in our um, trade plan. Okay. So let's go to the next one. All right, so this one is called the horn pattern, and this one's a little bit less common. Um, you don't see this one a lot, uh, but they are found at tops and bottoms, but they also can also be these corrections within um, uh, a confirming trend price action. Um, so let me show you an example of that one. So again, you know, it's kind of hard to see here, but you know, I'm just going to kind of make this a little bit bigger. And you know, what's our context here? Again, what's our trend context? Well, our trend context is certainly we can argue that this is an uptrend, right? And but if we're looking at this at a weekly, right, three years data weekly time frame, what is our short-term price action? One, two, three, four, five weeks of down trending prices in a higher time frame dominant trend that correction right could be a buying opportunity for us once we get that reversal pattern and there we can see you know a large range candle large range candle and there's that inside candle that's in between our two uh, large range candles it kind of looks like a horn pattern and then again, once price breaks out of our horn pattern, you know, a continuation of our higher time frame trend. Here we're just seeing a reversal of this extended trend and that's kind of what we want to look for for these ones right again as a risk management whoops procedure you know once price breaks out of our horn pattern again right there uh, these would be excellent exit opportunities in other words if I was in this trade from the beginning or caught any part of this long trade, that would have been a nice exit signal for me to take profits and look to find another opportunity. Uh, I just have another outside candle uh, happen to be uh, circled here. All right. Again, you know, like if I find these ones in weekly time frames, I tend to tend to they have a little bit better predictability monthlies as well. Okay, so the next one is called uh, a high cake or a trap is really what it is. And th what this one is a failed inside bar setup. Now, once price fails to hold the inside bar, well, oh, first of all, let's break this trade down here. So here we have an inside bar, right? And traditionally what we know from inside bars is that when price breaks above the inside bar or breaks below the inside bar, that is usually an indication that price action is going to continue in that direction. So this is traditionally would be a buy signal. Now, if uh, price fails to hold the inside bar, in this case here, right? Now, what we can do here is, well, first of all, this would be an exit for us for this buy entry, but it's called a trap. And what we can do is we can look at that opportunity, like I said to you before, is if we get a failed signal, we could see an increased volatility in the opposite direction. So we could exit this trade and then re-enter from the sell side. 
Now, this is a type of strategy is called an SAR strategy or a stop and reverse. So once price fails to hold the inside bar range, we're going to exit the trade, but it's also an opportunity to enter uh, a short position, long to short, because of a belief that there's going to be greater volatility uh, to come. Again, if I go back to Apple, let's kind of blow this up for you. All right, so there's our inside bar, right? A pause, right? You know, if you were a candlestick trader, you know, that's a nice little doji, right? Inside bar, and then we get that breakout above. That would be an indication that price is going to continue in this direction, and yet, no, price reverses and then breaks the inside bar, that failure for that uh, price action that we would exit that trade, but this would also be an opportunity to re-enter from uh, the short side. In other words, take a short uh, position. Now again, uh, using this in context of our trend, notice that this high cake was in a reversal correction in a higher time frame uh, downtrend and it reversed in an area of resistance now why would you say that i would call this an area of resistance well remember our two bar reversal which was the beginning of our last uptrend well you know technical theory says that old support once broken becomes new resistance All right, and our last pattern that I think you should be uh, putting in your trader's toolbox is called an opening range reversal. Now, this one is really more suited for day traders, but it's still advantageous to all traders. Um, it's definitely one that is going to take you time to train your eye to look for. Uh, so the pattern itself occurs when the opening price of the next candle opens outside of the previous candle's range, but then price reverses and comes back into the previous bar's range. Now, be careful on this one. Don't put your buy stop right at the low of this candle because a lot of times, if you think about what is going on here, this price gap lower, that's probably telling us that there are sellers here. And sometimes what price will do is they'll come back up and touch the bottom of this range and then continue to go down. So I like to have at least a buy stop inside the range. How far inside the range? Well, it depends on the stock you're trading or if you're using. Uh, you could be using maybe like an ATR uh, assessment, maybe somewhere between 2 and 5% of whatever your ATR. But it definitely want to be inside of that range. Maybe you could use a lower time frame to confirm uh, the price action that you're seeing. Now, notice the last paragraph here is this pattern reversal works a lot better uh, when we're taking it with the prevailing trend. In other words, in this particular instance, I would want to see an uptrend. And if it was in reverse, I want to see a downtrend. I don't like these when I'm taking a contra trend trade. I want to make sure that I'm with my trend. Okay, so let me uh, show you a couple examples of that one. So here's the cues, and again, let's look at our trend. Our trend is definitely down here, and here's our opening range reversal. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to start out here at the daily level, and then we're going to break this down into a lower time frame. And this is where I'm telling you, you need to, you know, kind of work on these to find them by training your eye, by looking at the bar patterns. But here's the bar from the 24th, and you can see it closed right there. And here's the bar from the 27th, the following Monday. And here's the opening price here. So price opened up higher outside of the previous VAR. That would typically be a bullish indication of price is going to continue to go in the up direction. But then price falls back into this bar's range and continues uh, to trade lower. If I go to a lower time frame, again, I want to show you how this trade played out. Again, this last bar right here is the last bar on the Friday of February, uh, June 24th. You can see it, the date up here in the left-hand corner right there. And then the following opening day, right, the 27th, there's that opening um, price, and then price falls back into the range. As as in terms of risk assessment on this one, it's pretty easy to do here is once you enter into a short position in this example here, you're going to just set your stop at the opening price of that reversal candle or that that gap candle. And if price reverses again and then gets it back above there, then you're out of that trade. But as long as price stays below that, in this case, this opening price, then price should continue to go in that direction. So again, in this one, you know, you can find these at higher time frames. You can find them in weeklies, um, you know, daily. But these are really kind of nice little setups for day traders. You know, you can find nice little risk reward ratios, um, you know, in out, in out real quick and fast. Um, but, you know, let me go back to this one again. You know, again, let's look at our higher time frame. Here is a correction. Here's our reversal pattern inside of our dominant trend. That's kind of what we want to find these type of trades in. So I want to make sure that I'm with the trend. Here's Microsoft. And again, you know, I'm on a daily level here, excuse me, I'm on a 60 minute level. Here is that closing candle right there, three o'clock. And, and the next day we gapped up. Again, that would typically be a bullish uh, signal. And then price came back inside of that uh, previous day's candle, in this case, the previous hour's candle. And that would have been an indication uh, to take a, a short position. Again, if I zoom out to a higher time frame, daily time frame, right? That reversal pattern, that shorting opportunity came in conjunction with our down trend. So, you know, these kind of opening range reversal patterns, you do see them in all time frames, you know, especially these micro time frames. But again, you know, I really kind of want to emphasize here is that I only look for the ones that are with my trend. I'm not really going to take the ones that are going to be contra trend. Those ones tend to have a lot more uh, failure to them, all right? So in this case, what we're seeing here is a reversal that is with our trend. Right, greater probability of uh, success. Now, um, as far as trading your eye for these ones or looking for opportunities to kind of look for them, one of the cool features that we do have in bar chart is something called our gap up and gap down page. And what I'll do in this one is think about what we're what we're looking at. We're seeing a price gap in one direction and reverse into the other direction. So what was the kind of, you know, um, market direction for today? Well, the market direction for today, the, you know, the rising tide, so to speak, was that prices have been going on. The, the broader market has been going up. 
So we want to look for one of these gap reversals, but we want to find one that is going to gap down first and then reverse up, right? Now notice that all these gap downs have negative uh, value, so that means they gap down and continue to go down. What I want to do is find the gap downs that have positive. That's where they've reversed. Now, I, you know, a lot of these are $2, um, you know, biotech stocks, but I did see one this morning. Let's see. You know, of course, it'll make me into a liar, but because um, it probably reversed again. Uh, let's see. Is it here? do not see it. So that might mean that it did reverse back the other way, but let's see if we can find one. Be patient with me for a second. Now right, let's give this one, let me just look a little bit deeper here. It's not on my screen. Okay. Um, all right. Let's look at this one. Western Asset Mortgage. Again, it gap. We gap down, but now it's up on the day, about one, almost two percent. So let's look at what the chart looks like. Okay. So you know, not really a really strong uptrend on this one, right? But you know, we are trending higher. Right, and then there's the closing price of the previous day candles. We gapped down lower and then, uh, you know, broke above uh, that uh, closing price and then price uh, continued to go up, you know, go up with the price trend that we're currently seeing. You know, in the bigger time frame, this is probably a kind of a sideways, but certainly if the tide of our broader market is, you know, uh, in an uptrend for today, so, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. So again, you know, for a day trader, you know, you know, what's our risk reward here? Well, we're going to come in at looks like around 1327. We're going to risk, you know, that opening price, 1316. So we're risking about 11 cents. And, you know, I'm going to anticipate that we're going to get to the high of this this candle so i'm risking 11 cents in this case to look looks like i'm going to make about what's that 35 cents uh 27 to 62 13 62 so a nice little three to one three and a half to one trade for a day trader nice little thank you very much you know walk away uh, i'm done with this particular trade okay all right so those are the uh, six different patterns I think you should start trading your eye uh, for. I do see some questions. So what I'm going to do here is while I review the questions and look at answer some of these questions, what I'm going to do is for just for fun, something that we haven't done in a while, is I'm going to put up a chart here for you. And let's blow this up so it's nice and big so you can see it. So I'm going to play a little game here while I'm answering your questions. And we have five different patterns here. And see if you can guess what those different um, patterns are based on the information you just learned today. All right. So let's see. I see a couple of my regulars in there. Aaron, hey, how's it going? Uh, so Aaron asks, says, inside bar tool inside equity traders can use other technical analysis such as volume and identify upward trends price. Um, so in theory, could you have two length bars that represent two, only two ticks? Oh, excuse me. Um, I'm reading two questions at the same time. Uh, can you use uh, with other technical indicators such as volume to identify upward trends? Yeah, Aaron, this is really what we want to do. Again, short-term patterns are um, really just a way to confirm what we're seeing and other technical analysis. Really just an enhancement to some trend ideas, uh, moving averages, um, uh, 
yeah, you know, MACDs or RSIs, uh, stochastics, you know, all of those other tools that we use, if we see a short-term pattern with those other technical analysis, then, you know, what we're doing is really kind of like a, a lot of check marks. A lot of check marks are saying, hey, there is definitely something going on. Typically, I will only use a short-term pattern um, at the end of my check look, checklist process, right? But that might be, um, I might see the pattern and then start that checklist and then finish with the checklist with that pattern. In other words, I might see tweezers say, hey, there might be an opportunity. Okay, let's go through that. Is my market overextended? Am I, am I in a correction? And I'm in the, and what's my, my trend? Where I am um, in, you know, a higher uh, time frame. Uh, what's the risk in this trade? What is the potential reward in this trade? And then go back to the pattern and say, okay, where does the pattern tell me uh, I have permission to enter that trade after I've already done all that other assessment? So great question, Aaron. Uh, that is exactly what we want to do. Uh, so Mike asks, so in theory, could a long bar that represents only two ticks? So I'm guessing you're talking about a micro time frame, you know, and, you know, you know, what, a 30 second chart again these patterns are found in all time frames not my forte in terms of trading you know you know tick charts but yeah you could you could see you know one bar being the opening could be one price and the the close could be another price and that volume could be uh, excuse me that range of price could be a very large range of ice for that very micro time frame yeah sure why not uh, uh, Kevin asks. Um, yeah, just a second, John. So uh, while he's reviewing and answering your questions, he's got this uh, AMD chart up here with five different patterns, and um, I've got a few people sending me what they think each of these patterns are. But keep keep sending your comments in along with the number uh, of the number that you see, and we'll pass those on to John and. See how correct or how closely you've been listening this session. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, uh, this is a uh, remember in uh, like high school where you you know you take a test and then you uh, uh, you grade yourself, right? What are they, I forget what they call that, right? So uh, we're gonna it's gonna be an honor system that you. Uh, uh, That's grade right. Yourself. <laughs> Send in your answers though. Okay, so Kevin asks, you know, uh, he notices that I'm using real time and not extended hours and do i find that they are more effective um so you know kevin again it's really kind of about the style of trader um do i want to look at some of these bar patterns outside of when you know the, these markets are less active if that's the style of trader i am yeah you can do that Certainly, um, you know, and you, and you mentioned the word Globex here. So this is kind of telling me that maybe you are a futures trader uh, in terms of Globex. So, yeah, I mean, in futures markets, for sure, I would be looking at what would we call those extended hours outside of the regular exchange hours when the exchanges are open. For futures markets, yeah, I would definitely use uh, these. But for equities, you know, for stocks, I really kind of want to see when – you know, our institutions are active or when our, um, you know, our novices are making mistakes. Uh, not all novices have access to extended trading hours. Could I see those patterns? For sure. Could I use them to find trading opportunities? For sure. It just really depends on the style of trader you are and the risk uh, that you're willing to take. Okay. So, um So uh, Sergio asked something, do I, in general, do I feel that bullish gaps are more uh, potential than bearish gaps? That's a good question, Sergio. I had to think about that one. You know, I just think gaps tell a very certain story. So I don't know if I would lean one way or the other. Certainly, you know, as most of us equity traders, you know, we're always kind of bullish. So we're always looking to buy. So maybe we favor bullish gaps in terms of trends. But I think sometimes bearish gaps, you get, you know, very quick volatile price movements. So for as, you know, for day trading purposes, you know, um, 
you know, that old adage, you know, bears take the elevator and, and, and bulls take the stairs. So you could get a bullish gap and it might take two or three days or a couple of weeks before you really get a, a significant price action. But on a bear gap, you could see, you know, a big price action literally in just one day. Now, you know, great question, Sergio, and kind of a tease and we'll come to show um, in a couple of weeks, I'm in planning and doing a gap session. So come back in a couple of weeks and we'll look at gaps and we'll talk about that. Let me think about this one for a little bit and we'll, we'll come back to that. So I see a lot of you answering uh, your answering uh, the different zones. So I see a lot of right answers, but I do see a few wrong answers. So let's go through that before we finish. Okay, Gene, is that like a good idea? That Wouldn't sounds do? great. All right, so the first one here I think is pretty easy, right? Right, here's our previous candle. Here's our reversal candle. And the range of this candle is outside of the range of this candle. So this would be an outside candle. Okay, this one's a little bit tougher, right? But here's this candle and then this candle. This candle is inside of this candle, this candle, this middle candle is inside of this candle's range. Now, what makes this more significant is that what is the opening and closing price is doing here? So this candle was a bullish candle in a what? Downtrend. And then price did what? It broke down, reconfirming that bears are back in control. So this is where bulls got a little bit in control, but they didn't get the follow through. They didn't get that confirmation. Why we need to wait for price to break out of the range of our inside candle before we decide which way to go. So this is a inside candle. Okay, uh, this one, right? Both have the same bottom, right? One opened in up here and closed down here in the direction of our price action. This one opened here and closed here in opposite of our direction. So this would be our two bar reversal, our twins, pinchers, tweezers, whatever you call that right this one's a little tougher um you know maybe it's a combination of a tweezers top here but this is really kind of a you know a horn pattern right so you have two large range candles you have a kind of this inside candle this candles range is inside of both of these two candles um it comes at the end of an extended price range price movement uh so this one was a little bit tougher. If you got this one, uh, good job on that one. And then finally, here our candle closed here. Our price moved down. We gapped down, opened here, and then price did what? It reversed from the opening back into the previous candle's range. So this is our opening reversal candle. So I don't see many folks got that one. Again, this is one of those ones that are a little bit more uh, trickier uh, to find. At least you start, need to start training your eye. Okay. All right. So let's go. Takeaways. One single bar can tell us a compelling story between the buyers, our bulls, and our bears, right? The length of the bar, the direction of where the opens and the closes are. How does that bar uh, relate to the previous bar? Short-term patterns are only of a few bars, one or two or maybe three bars, and not related to time. We're going to find these in all different time frames. Uh, Short-term patterns offer greater significance when they're combined with that cluster er evidence, Evan, Aaron, right? Other technical analysis. Right. And then the examples I try to show to you today is I really wanted to concentrate on looking for short term patterns that are have support based on support and resistance and or our trends. Right. 
looking for those reversals of corrections, pullbacks, and drawbacks in our higher time frame trends. All right. Um, short term patterns that are found at end of price extremes are best at best are just early warnings of potential price reversal. Again, we need that confirmation. In other words, the next bar needs to move outside of our short term pattern. That mistake I made in Apple, I saw an outside bar and I took a short position without getting the confirmation. My bad, right? That's a really good learning example there, okay? And then finally, most short-term patterns are reversal patterns, though they do have greater uh, predictive value uh, when we look at them at these higher time frame trends, dailies, weeklies, monthlies, right? But we can use the lower time frames to use uh, to find those confirmation entries and exits. Okay. So, you know, I want to remind you all that uh, we do offer a 30-day uh, trial process to uh, try out uh, the premier, premier um, bar chart premier. Uh, yeah, bar chart premier. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to change my, uh, oops, my screen here. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to do three things at once. Okay. So I want to talk about our upcoming webinar for next week. Uh, we're going to go back and look at swing trading. We got a lot of questions after our last swing trading session. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back and look at strategies in terms of swing trading. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a top-down analysis. We're going to do some trend uh, identification. I know a lot of folks have a difficulty defining trend. And, you know, is it a short-term corrective trend? And am I looking at a higher time frame? Is it a dominant trend? Um, we're going to look at supply and demand levels or support and re resistance levels in helping us uh, determine probability of success of trades, but also, um, you know, help us to find where we're going to set our exits because, you know, a short-term trade or, excuse me, a swinging trade, you know, we're not going to hold on to these positions for uh, an extended period of time, maybe a few days, maybe a week, maybe two weeks at most. And that's where you're going to get a little bit of a risk management. Um, the other thing I want to remind you is that, you know, put your email in up here and submit it and you'll get notifications of uh, upcoming webinar. Sergio, definitely got to do that so you can do the uh, gap one when we do that one. But I also want to remind you that all of our videos are on our YouTube page. And Jean, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, actually, I just sent uh, all of you a link to Bar Chart's YouTube page. You know, we always say that you can access recordings of the webinars on our website, which you absolutely can. We've got an archived webinar page, but our YouTube channel also contains all of those uh, archived webinars as long or as well as some special content. Um, John, go ahead and click that playlist. We have uh, different playlists and we have one specifically called Bar Chart Collaborations. There, there are a number of people uh, very active on social media that actually use Bar Chart in their day-to-day -day trading process. And uh, that collaborations playlist shows you a number of people who've actually recorded sessions, talked about how they use bar chart, and it, it's a great resource for you to uh, to go and just check out. Just a little, te little tease coming up. We've got a few new collaborations coming later on this week that uh, are gonna be great content for you to listen to, as well as going back and listening to John's videos. Yeah, I think um, one of them is going to be a crypto one, I believe. Is that correct? Uh, well, there, the one right there, surging inflation and the impact on Bitcoin, that uh, deals with the crypto market. That's one of our recent collaborations. Excellent, excellent. So, yeah, so definitely check it out. come and check it out. Not only, you know, checking out my past uh, sessions, but, you know, getting a little bit uh, more information from outsiders. Now, I think it's kind of funny that Genius said is that, you know that these folks use bar chart why wouldn't they use bar chart bar chart is awesome bar chart is really an awesome tool for traders so i mean it makes sense to use bar chart right that's absolutely right 
Okay. Do we have anything else we need to talk about? I think that's it. Or I see we're over an hour. Uh, so I want to wish everybody, you know, stay safe out there, best of health, and the good of all trading.